The Earth is a strange place, with one of its enigmas being how it cuts through the heart of one of the most powerful nations in human history, the United States of America. If you look closely, you'll notice that the sharp divide between populated and unpopulated America follows a nearly vertical line south to north, directly to the west of many major population centers such as San Antonio, Austin, Fort Worth, Oklahoma City, Wichita, Lincoln, Omaha, Sioux Falls, Fargo, and all the way up to Winnipeg in Canada. These are the cities that literally mark the North American border. This fact becomes clear when the population density map is replaced with a satellite picture of the United States at night. So why is there this great divide between the East and the West of America, and why are there so few in the Western area? Join us as we discover why this is so. Stay tuned as the reason may shock you. A relatively continuous chain of lights extends east of these frontier cities all the way to the Atlantic Ocean and the eastern seaboard. To their west lies a sea of darkness with only a few islands of light and civilization. If you drive from the east to the west across this invisible line at any point, you will quickly notice the sharp change in the distances between communities, gas stations, and general stores. This invisible line that divides the more developed east from the more rural west generally follows the 98th meridian of longitude and divides the American population in half. East of this line, 260 million people make up an overwhelming 80% of all Americans. That implies that the remaining 20%, or roughly one in every five Americans, reside west of the line, a large swath of the country that, when Alaska is included, accounts for the majority of America's acreage. Surprisingly, this desolate part of the United States to the west of the line, where just one in every five Americans dwell, includes California, the country's single most populous state, which has more people than Canada. However, California is a massive exception to the general rule because, with approximately 40 million people, it alone accounts for roughly 60% of the whole American population west of the 98th meridian. But it gets even crazier because the majority of California's population lives on the state's westernmost outskirts, near the Pacific Ocean. Suppose you draw a separate line from San Diego in the south to Portland and Seattle in the north. In that case, you'll discover that around 50 million Americans live within the narrow coastal plain between the Pacific Ocean to the west and the Cascades and Sierra Nevada Mountains to the east, an isolated, albeit lengthy, pocket of civilization surrounded by darkness. Between this pocket and the 98th meridian, a wide length of American interior covers over one-third of all territory in the United States. It is only slightly larger than the entire European Union. It comprises eight U.S. states and a considerable amount of settlement from nine more, yet only 30 million people are living there, or around 9% of the American population. To put that statistic in context, that's a number of individuals comparable to only the population of the greater New York City metropolitan region on the U.S. East Coast. And then there's the fact that most of those 30 million people live within only a handful of metropolitan oases strewn across the darkness. Around a third of them just dwell within just three of these oases, Phoenix, Denver, and Las Vegas. More than half of them live within the top eight major oases, including those largest three plus Salt Lake City, Tucson, Albuquerque, El Paso, and Boise. When removing just these eight metropolitan oases, the rest that remains throughout the area is home to less than 15 million people, approximately the same number of people who live within just LA and Orange counties in Southern California. The vast bulk of this massive terrain is nearly devoid of any human life and civilization, and it symbolizes one of the emptiest landscapes on the surface of 21st century Earth. As a result, the line that divides America's heavy population in the East from its almost empty population in the West can and has been shown in thousands of various maps portraying all types of seemingly unconnected realities within the United States. Even plants follow the unwritten law of this line. So what the hell is going on here? Why does this invisible linear law of nature that decides so much about American culture and civilization exist in the first place? To address that question, we need to travel back a few decades. When European settlers washed ashore in the United States in the 17th century, the majority of them came from the East. Naturally, this established the Eastern sector, which was later steadily expanded westward. The United States acquired a huge amount of land from France in 1803, known as the Louisiana Purchase, and towns such as San Francisco in 1846. Still, moving from East to West is only half of the explanation for this midsection's emptiness. 
The Cascades, Rocky Mountains, and Sierra Nevada are located near the West Coast. Because of these peaks, surviving in the Wild West is so tough. The Rocky Mountains have some of the highest peaks in the United States, with a record of 14,400 feet. In contrast, the only major mountain ranges dominating the east are the Appalachian Mountains, which are the highest at barely 6,000 feet, less than half of the tallest in the globe. However, while these mountains are difficult to live in, their effect causes this vast area to remain so vacant. When steep mountains keep moist air from reaching the other side, a rain shadow forms, leaving it absolutely dry. In this example, the Sierra Nevada and Cascade Mountains block all wet air from the Pacific Ocean, and whatever air does get to the Great Basin is dry with little to no moisture. However, the Great Basin is not the only region affected. Even the world's third longest mountain range, even the Rocky Mountains, contributes to this effect. They stretch an incredible 3,000 kilometers from Colombia to New Mexico, thus forming a massive barrier across the Wild West. Add in the Traverse Catan and Peninsula Ranges, and thousands of feet of walls prevent moisture from entering the Pacific Ocean. As a result, the West's climate might be categorized as semi-arid and dry. According to the yearly rainfall map, only the western side of the Cascades receives precipitation comparable to the entire East, with an average rainfall of 80 to 100 inches. As a result, we find cities like Vancouver and Seattle, whereas on the eastern side of the Cascades, there is essentially no rainfall and very little population. But why can't the moist wind from the Atlantic Ocean or the wind from the Gulf of Mexico bring rain to the west? The solution is straightforward. It has mostly evaporated by the time moisture reaches the 100th meridian line. As a result, multiple deserts now encircle major portions of the west, including the Mojave, Sonoran, and Chihuahuan deserts. That leaves the west with a sizable portion of America's deserts. With high temperatures, Death Valley in California, for example, is the driest area in the United States. The lack of rainfall and the high mountain ranges make it impossible to establish big population centers in this region. Agriculture appears to be insurmountable when combined with little rain and a lack of development. To compensate for this, sophisticated irrigation systems would be required. However, because of the West's lack of rivers and lakes, it is nearly impossible to develop them, and the harsh terrain does not help matters. However, California is an exception because of its highly advanced irrigation infrastructure and access to the Colorado River. Along with the Missouri and Columbia Rivers, the Colorado River is a major water supplier in the western United States. Smaller lakes and rivers in the west derive their water from melting glaciers and snow-capped summits. As a result, western land is better suited to cattle production than vast farmlands. Agriculture does exist, but not on the same scale as in the east. Despite being the state with the largest agricultural in the U.S., California can only feed its own people. The rest of the West suffers from droughts and water scarcity or must resort to dry land farming methods. However, these methods come at a high cost if not used correctly. This was seen during the Dust Bowl drought of 1934, which lasted decades. Poor ways of preventing wind erosion, dust storms, and severe droughts resulted in one of the worst living conditions ever. Storms alone destroyed more than 350 homes, and 500,000 people were displaced. Those who remained were compelled to flee their homes in search of work and sustenance. Most farmers in Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, Iowa, Nebraska, Kansas, Texas, Colorado, and New Mexico abandoned their farms. Finally, the few who did manage to settle in the inhospitable West were forced to leave. Droughts cause aggressive wildfires, and the western United States is known to have wildfire seasons. In 2020, a series of wildfires swept across California, Oregon, and Washington, causing significant economic and human destruction. Approximately 5.8 million acres of land were burnt by wildfires in 2022. The figure is remarkable on its own, but it becomes much more frightening when compared to the East, which lost only 2.8 million acres to wildfires. In short, even if you manage to survive the droughts, wildfires will significantly threaten your life and property. However, this tremendous division between East and West is simply the beginning of a far more significant problem, climate change. According to reasonable estimates, the human arid border has migrated 140 miles east since 1980. However, this does not mean that all hope is lost. While the West faces unprecedented challenges, humanity excels at devising extraordinary answers. The US government is already taking steps to address the core causes of climate change, 
the U.S. government has proposed reducing carbon emissions to zero by 2050. In addition, various water conservation programs have been launched to resolve the significant water scarcity difficulties. States such as Nevada and Arizona are transitioning to cleaner fuels such as solar energy. This suggests that change is not just around the corner, it has already arrived. Mother Nature is a force that should not be underestimated. That is why we must be willing to set aside our differences in order to build a better future. Well, that's it for today. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe. We really appreciate your support.